It's just very difficult to make hydrogen, store it, and use it in a car. Hydrogen is an energy storage mechanism. It's not a source, Elon Musk said in an interview. It's an energy storage mechanism. It's not a source of energy. The problem, though, is that it takes a lot of energy in the first place to turn hydrogen into usable car fuel. The most common method is electrolyzing water. Electrolysis is an extremely inefficient energy process, he went on to explain. If you charge your battery packs from a solar panel directly, compared with trying to split water, take the hydrogen, dump the oxygen, compress the hydrogen with extremely high pressure or liquefy it, put it in a car and run a fuel cell. It's about half the efficiency. It's terrible, said Musk. In this video, we take a look at why did the hydrogen vehicle lose traction after all the hype that was surrounding it? And what does the hydrogen-fueled electric car mean for our environment? Stay with us until the end. There was a time when hydrogen was presented as the future of fuel for our cars. These vehicles promised things like longer driving distance, faster refueling, and eco-friendly energy. George W. Bush, maybe you still remember him, liked hydrogen fuel cells so much he offered $1.3 billion in funding to get these cars on the road. But Elon Musk's personal opinion is that hydrogen is not the way to go. I would support trying out multiple new technologies. My personal opinion is that hydrogen is not the way to go, not just because I have an electric car company. I mean, I could have started a hydrogen car company. Um, so this, my opinion, predates Tesla. His issues with hydrogen are just that it takes an enormous amount of energy to separate, to create hydrogen in the first place. It's not naturally occurring on Earth. So you can either get to electrolyze water or you've got to crack a hydrocarbon. If you electrolyze water, it's much, much less efficient by a factor of three or four than simply charging an electric car with a battery. If you crack hydrocarbons, then you're just basically a hydrocarbon burning car in disguise. So there's no possible win there. The other factor is that hydrogen is a very difficult vertical to store and transport. So it's a very light gas, and any tank that you stored it in is enormous because of the low density. And it tends to escape very easily, and if it does escape, it's highly volatile and can have extremely explosive consequences. Within seconds, there was a terrific explosion aft, and brilliant orange flames formed the backdrop for a tableau of death. Because of these reasons, companies are afraid of hydrogen. The cost to construct just one hydrogen refueling station can come to almost $2 million, which is way more than your average gas station that costs $300,000 or the electric charging station that costs $50,000. And to make matters worse, most stations have one pump. With such a small customer base, it's hard for companies to commit such large sums of money toward hydrogen stations with no promise of return on investment. Because of this, the U.S. has only 11,000 hydrogen cars, mostly in California, and only 48 hydrogen refueling stations, 43 in California. California subsidies offer millions of dollars towards the construction of hydrogen fueling stations and plan to have over 100 stations in place by 2025. This is still significantly less than the tens of thousands of gas stations and EV charging stations around the United States. Hydrogen power is not new, and hydrogen vehicles have been around since the Ford Model A. Hydrogen fuel cells have been used for years by the military and NASA. Hydrogen is used as a rocket fuel, and it's dominant in buses and forklifts. Consumers may welcome hydrogen cars since they don't come with the range anxiety of electricity nor the expense of a gasoline-fueled vehicle. Several manufacturers have recently been advertising as the future for passenger cars. There are four hydrogen fuel cells available on U.S. markets right now. The cheapest one is the Toyota Mirai, starting at $50,000, and the most expensive is the hydrogen-fueled, more million-dollar electric hypercar, the Hyperion XP1. So how much does it cost to refuel your hydrogen car? 
The average price for hydrogen fuel is about $16 per kilogram. Yes, kilogram. Hydrogen is measured by weight, much different to how gasoline is measured, which is by volume. The Toyota Mirai holds about 5.6 kilograms of hydrogen, traveling up to 402 miles on a fill-up. So the cost of that tank is $89, which is pretty pricey considering the more cost-effective alternatives, such as full electric cars. The average cost to fully charge a Tesla Model X, $15.29, lasting 360 miles on one charge. So that cost per 100 miles is $4.24, which is way less than the $22.25 per 100 for the hydrogen-fueled Toyota Mirai. The hydrogen fuel cell market relies on subsidies and incentives to stay afloat and keep costs down. But even with help from the government and manufacturers, consumers just aren't interested in hydrogen cars as much as electric cars. Why is it like that? Although refueling a hydrogen EV is very similar in time to an internal combustion engine vehicle, but the refueling options are very limited, as we talked before, while battery EVs can already be conveniently charged at the owner's home. And the expansion of the EV charging infrastructure is easy, mainly because there's already an electrical grid in place in most areas where cars typically need to be charged. If the hydrogen EVs would be faster and more fun to drive, then maybe they might be worthy of consideration, right? The 2021 Toyota Mirai goes from 0 to 60 in 9.2 seconds and reaches a blazing top speed of 106 miles per hour. Now, drivers won't have a problem merging onto the freeway or passing other cars, but you're not going to hit the drag strip. While the Tesla Model 3 with the same price tag will smoothly sprint to 60 miles per hour in 3 seconds and finish the quarter mile in 11.5 seconds at 117.3 miles per hour. However, there is a hydrogen EV that can compete with the Tesla Model 3. Let's take a look at the hydrogen-powered Hyperion XP1, which claims to go from 0 to 60 in 2.2 seconds, reaching a top speed of 220 miles per hour, but it costs more than a million dollars if it were available for customers to buy. And still slower than a Tesla Model S Plaid that accelerates with 1.2 Gs and is 20% faster than free falling. If companies are going to market hydrogen EVs as green, you assume they're great for the environment. But according to Elon Musk, it's not as green as people say they are. Why is this? Before any hydrogen vehicle can hit the road, you first need to produce the hydrogen. But hydrogen is not readily available energy source. However, sometimes they say the hydrogen is the most common element in the universe. Yeah, but not on Earth, which is the important consideration. In the United States, the majority of hydrogen is produced through a process called steam reforming. Hydrogen produced by the steam reforming actually has less energy than the natural gas that the steam reforming began with. And while hydrogen fuel cells themselves don't produce pollution, this process does. Another method to produce hydrogen is electrolysis, separating the hydrogen out of the water using an electric current. This process requires even more energy input than steam reforming. You end up losing 25% of the energy from the original energy when you carry out electrolysis. Now the hydrogen must be compressed, chilled, and transported to the station, which is 10% of the energy. Once it's pumped into the car, it must be turned back into electricity, and with that process losing another 25% of the energy. The energy then must power the motor, but it's only 98% efficient. If you put all this together, only 38% of our energy are actually used to run the car. So hydrogen fuel cells are only 38% efficient. What about a battery EV? Since battery EVs use the electricity directly they make, about 80% efficiency, which is two times more efficient as a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle. And what does this mean for the environment? This energy is taken from things like fossil fuels, nuclear power plants, and windmills. However, there's no car that's 100% green, but hydrogen is a surprisingly worse alternative than battery EV vehicles. For now, battery-powered electric vehicles seem to be the sensible choice going forward in the quest for a pollution-free consumer transport. I hope you guys had fun and enjoyed this video, and if you did, 
Come on, destroy that like button. Get us that YouTube algorithm, and don't forget, subscribe and click that bell. If you want to know more about mind-blowing sports cars and Tesla news, click on the exclusive playlist on the Watch Next. Thanks for watching, and see you next time in another mind-blowing video.